In this episode, you get to hear my reflections on what I learned from climbing and skiing my first 4000 meter peak and what I would do different next time. Enjoy! Wow, well, sitting down is not enough, I want to lay down actually. Here's what I learned from uh, climbing and skiing my first 4000 meter peak. Number one is the following. Come physically prepared. Uh, it went better than I expected. I brought some fitness from the winter, even if I've had summer in Sweden for a month with not so much training. It went all right, but I would like in the future to climb a bit more dangerous things. And if I'm going to get as tired as I got on the top, uh, get a little bit bad balance for a bit when it was the hardest, uh, just before reaching the summit. So I'd like to get fitter so that uh, that shouldn't be an issue. That feels like a good idea for next spring. So um, I thought I'd talk to an expert about that to get some tips on how to do that. So here's him. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Uh, four elements. So I'd say the first, the first and most important piece in thinking about uh, preparing yourself better as an endurance athlete is to have a plan. So move from just going out and exercising to thinking about training. So have a plan, you know, name your objective and then develop an approach toward it. That's number one. Second thing is to use uh, the idea of aerobic training as your primary goal. Uh, the majority of your training, 90% or more of the volume of time that you're training should be in that aerobic zone. Uh, that is gonna be the, the greatest bang for your buck. Uh, number three, is to make sure that in addition to that aerobic capacity, you lay a really good foundation of strength. Uh, and, and strength includes not only those, those heavier, uh, heavier lifts like squats and deadlifts and building that big muscular strength, which is really valuable, but also doing the single leg strength, the balance, the mobility, these, what we call functional movement, so that your body knows how to move in a single leg way, in a, in a dynamic way, and then the fourth piece is to think about how you can sort of sharpen the knife uh, or increase your speed. Uh, so once you've got those other foundation pieces in place, you can start doing some selective high intensity training and, and more specific workouts to get that speed and that, that power up to, up to a, a higher point. And, and when you put all those pieces together over the course of a training period, that's what's going to give you the greatest returns when you when you get out on the slopes and you start targeting those bigger mountains. Pack right and light. Just the things you need and nothing more. I really have to analyze what went into my bag on this trip. I want to weigh it and see what I could have done a little bit different. Uh, we're going to look at what I usually ski tour with, how I changed it for this 4000 meter project and how I would change it yet again for the next ski mountaineering thing. Here's a little warning. The ski equipment that I'm talking about that I brought with me or bring on the next one is assuming that I do with a mountain guide that will bring a solid first aid kit, emergency shelter, even some emergency sled thing where you can build a pair of skis into like a sled to have a injured person be pulled down. So this is like minimal stuff you might need to bring more let's get started all right let's weigh my normal ski touring ski <laughs> but now let's wrap it all up and see where we end up with the weights so on a normal ski touring thing i added up uh, some water and camera gear um, on a normal ski touring day it normally comes in at 29.6 kilos the equipment I have on my feet and in my backpack. It's surprisingly heavy all of this, I thought it would be less. And on this ski touring adventure I brought as much as 32.7 kilos of equipment. And that is then 3.1 kilos heavier than my normal ski touring equipment despite bringing a lot of more stuff like harness, boots, ice axe, rope, uh, some sleeping stuff. Uh, so for the next ski touring adventure, 
my estimate on the weight right now is that it's going to be 28.26 kilos so 28.3 kilos and that is a whopping 4.45 kilos or 4450 kilos lighter for the next one i'm excited next time i go ski touring it's gonna be easier so that's the equipment uh, what i learned about it um, and what i would do different it's been great i learned a few things about ski mountaineering but i also feel a little bit out of my depth i think i would like to take some ski mountaineering kind of courses uh, maybe get slowed into some crevasses practice crevasse rescue more of these rope skills that Dave's been doing like just doing cool things, making it safe. Um, little bits and techniques like that. Because it would be cool in a year or two maybe to be able to do something like this by myself with my friends. I learned an important lesson in the hut is to be fast in the morning. I'm not fast in the morning and there's room for improvement here and uh, checklists that they mentioned it is a good idea and also like check your gear in the evening have it all sorted I don't know why I didn't do that I thought it'd be so easy in the morning it wasn't I was faffing got a little stressed lost my GoPro it was in my left pant pocket wasted some time we were the last group out of the hut so um, that's a lesson learned in the hut be really prepared in the evening and bring eggs because otherwise I would have eaten dry toast with butter and jam on them I don't know, that's not my kind of breakfast. So I was happy to bring four hard boiled eggs. I was happy to bring that weight up. It was uh, <laughs> two hours of hiking up there. Totes worth it. Thank you for watching. Hope you learned something from me, amateur wannabe ski mountaineer. If you want to learn from something better, obviously check out Dave Searle's YouTube channel or maybe hire him as a guy too. He's great. And I hope to see you in the next video. Ciao.